Good wholesaling houses in New York show. I am Michael Pinto. I teach you how to start flipping a wholesaling houses in New York or if you're doing a great business. That was very quick. Okay. Interesting question. Does a real estate purchase agreement have to be notarized? Great question. So in New York, I can tell you the answer. And this may end the video right now is no, it doesn't have to be. But let me explain, first of all, what a purchase, what a purchase agreement is, why you, why you would think it needs to be notarized, why it may need, need to be notarized in other states. Jeez Louise, I'm sorry. Okay. So first of all, a purchase agreement, which in New York we call a contract. In other states, they call it a purchase and sale, purchase and sale agreement, purchase agreement. I don't know. We call it a contract here. Um, now, the process of getting into contract in New York, or as they say in California, getting into escrow, um, is complicated, right? In other states, it's a simple process. A, a, a real estate transaction takes place between a buyer and a seller. So I'm a buyer. I want to buy your property. You're a seller. You want to sell a property. I can whip out any contract and say, hey, I'll buy your property for $400,000. And by the way, here's a check for 50 bucks, which you may or may not deposit. And you'll sign it. And technically, we're in contract. Usually in that contract, I will have some kind of contingency. I will say, you know, I need to inspect the property for two weeks. In, in California, that's the an escrow contingency. Uh, with all, same kind of thing, where the buyer can just get out. That is not how it works in New York. Not even close. Okay, In New York, it is a complicated process to get into the contract because the transaction really takes place between a seller's attorney who actually prepares the contract and a buyer's attorney who will negotiate the terms of that contract. And there will never be an inspection contingency on a residential deal, very rare, almost never. Commercial, it's pretty common because it's assumed that a commercial deal, you're going to need to do some due diligence. You're going to need to check the leases. You're going to need to check the credit worthiness of the tenants, all that kind of crap. Uh, or if it's if it's uh, rent controlled or rent stabilized, geez, Louise, you got to hire an attorney to go through all the hundred years worth of documents to see if anybody overcharged a tenant. But on a regular regular with my microphone, on a regular residential contract in New York, there's not going to be an inspection contingency. So what happens? That means after you agree on a price, an inspection gets done right immediately. And then if there are any repairs that you as a buyer want, you're going to put that into the contract. Now, the seller has the, op uh, the option of saying, screw you, I'm not doing any of those repairs. Or the seller can say, I'll do all those repairs. Or the seller can say, I'll give you an adjustment on price. Or the seller can say, I'll do some of those repairs. But all of that stuff gets done before the contract is signed. Now, why is that? And I think it's pretty much because attorneys don't want to waste their time writing up a contract that anybody can just walk away from. However, on a re almost every standard seller to buyer transaction not involving an investor there is a mortgage contingency which allows the buyer to really get out of the contract at any time right people don't talk about that right there's a lack of certainty now most buyers are not interested in getting out of the contract they want to buy the property but i was in the mortgage business for many many years and on many many occasions people call me and said you know what i i don't i just don't want to buy this house anymore can you give me a denial for mortgage very easy to do very easy to deny someone for a mortgage Documents expire all the time. It's simple, right? So on a regular transaction, there really is a lack of certainty because the buyer really has, if, if they have a mortgage contingency, which is standard in, in New York, they have a get out of contract free card. When you go to an investor, I have no contingencies when I go into contract. So yeah, there is there, that certainty. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about notarization. So what is notarization if you don't know? That is an affirmation. I am actually a licensed notary. Where's my stamp? stamp. I always have a stamp here. There's my notary stamp that I keep one in my house, one in my desk, and one in my car. That is an affirmation that the person that signed the contract actually was that person. That's all a notarization is. People think notarization means that the document is legal, but the guy is going to do what he says he's going to do. It doesn't mean any of that, right? I can sign a notarization that says I am uh, worth $10 billion. If I sign it and I show my ID to a notary, 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 notary will notarize that. So... Really, the question is, why isn't a purchase and sale agreement have to be notarized? It doesn't have to be notarized in New York because the attorney that's uh, attorney for the buyer should know the buyer and know who he is. If the attorney is going to attest that the buyer is right, the attorney is the one. So let me just explain how the uh, contract process works in New York. Sales attorney generates a contract, sends it to a buyer's attorney. Buyer's attorney looks at it and says, hey, I don't like this. I don't like that. Change this. Change that. My buyer wants X, Y, and Z. My buyer wants you to fix the fix the smoke detectors, whatever the hell it is. Sales attorney goes back to his a, a client and says, hey, this guy wants to change 12 things. Seven, seven of them don't matter. Five of them you might want to be concerned about because this could, it, it could mean this or that. And um, one of them I'm definitely not agreeing to. And the, by the way, the guy wants you to replace the smoke detectors. Seller will say, well, whatever you think, uh, and I'll do the smoke detectors. So goes back to the buyer. This could take 
this could, this could take weeks, if not months, sometimes. And I, I, but the point is that the attorneys are involved. Attorneys know who their clients are. They're supposed to know who their client is. Um, I have some competitors who try and tell people that as a bot, uh, when as a seller, you don't need an attorney. I'll, I'll you, you can use my attorney, and I'll cover the cost. You know, and then and that seller attorney never even sees the seller. I think that's insane, right? I, I have uh, situations where the sellers ask me for an attorney. I send them an attorney, a real attorney who really represents them. They should be represented, right? Now, the idea, oh, that I'm trying to get over them is absurd. Their, their legal interest should be represented there. Nobody's trying to take advantage of anyone. I just had it yesterday. I'm getting a contract today. A uh, guy didn't have an attorney. I, rep- I recommended an attorney, a real guy, not a jerk. Um, and someone who met with him and saw him, saw that he was a live, real person, and, and pro- maybe asked for his ID. So um, also at the closing, he didn't show ID anyway. So you don't have to uh, notarize a contract here. Now, in other states, it may be something that you do want notarized, right? Because in other states, as a real estate investor, because it's so easy to get into contract, it's really easy to get out of contract. And what happens a lot is that sellers just say, sorry, change my mind. And you really have no recourse against them. There are some states where you can record the contract with the county. You can record a memorandum of contract. You can record an affidavit of contract, all kinds of things. And what that is supposed to do is supposed to cloud title, which means if they try to sell the property to somebody else, the title company should see this recorded document and go, hey, what is this? And then call, come to you and you'll ask for some money. That's, that is possible, but it doesn't, it's not foolproof for a few reasons. Number one is what if the guy doesn't sell anything for 20 years? You're not really preventing him from not selling it to you. Number two is some title companies don't care about these things. And number three is the title company calls you and, you know, at that point, you may not even remember the deal. So in New York, it's very different. Once you're in the contract, there's no getting out of contract, right? It's impossible. Seller says, I don't want to do it. This has happened to me, I think, two or three times. <coughs> I'm sorry. I just say, speak to your attorney. Now, remember, sellers are represented by attorneys in New York 99.9% of the time. After they call their attorney, they call me back usually that day or the next day and say, when can we close? Because one of the greatest things about New York is that if a seller changes his mind and says, he doesn't want to sell it to you, what you can do is two things. Number one, you can file a list pendants on his on his property. And a list pendants is the most serious kind of uh, lien on a property. It's almost like you're foreclosing on a mortgage. And he will never sell that property to anybody else. It's not like a title company can say, oh, we're going to overlook a list pendants. They will be out of business if they do that. Second thing you can do is you can sue him for specific performance for the entire purchase price. So if he doesn't want to sell you a property for $400,000, you can sue him for $400,000. And guess what? You're going to win, right? If you're a buyer ready to perform, you're ready to close, the guy doesn't want to close, he's out, out of luck. So as a buyer, you really have a strong uh, upper hand in New York, and every attorney knows this. So when a seller says, I want more money or something, I say, just speak to your attorney, his attorney's going to go, you got no choice. You got to close, and you got to close under the terms of this contract, and you have no outs. The only way out of a contract is from the buyer if the seller cannot convey clean title. So if something shows up that was unexpected, if the guy has a million dollar lien on that he lien on it that he can't pay, or some kind of uh, municipal issue like open permits or uh, open violations, then maybe you can get out of the contract based on that. But otherwise, seller has to perform and has to sell. So contracts in New York are are almost never notarized. Um, I would say never, pretty much. Um, contracts on the states I've seen sometimes they are notarized because you want to be able to go back and say prove that this guy signed it. You can't just say somebody else signed it. Not- notary affirms that the person's name uh, matched the signature. The person signed it, right? A notary is supposed to watch that guy sign in front of him and show you ID, to know, or if you, unless you know him, show ID that you know who that guy is. That's what a notary is there for to prove that the person who said they signed it actually signed it. But it's not done in New York because. As I said, attorneys are involved, and it's usually not done. And the truth is, in a lot of states, it's not done either. But I can understand why it would be done in other states. In New York, it's not necessary. I hope this was helpful. If you're interested in all the ways I can help you, go to howtoflipnewyork.com. If you're interested in, in learning about a course that I teach uh, about how to do what I do, go to howtoflipnewyorkcourse.com. If you're interested in learning more about one-on-one coaching that I provide for an absurdly low price, go to coaching.howtoflipnewyork.com. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. If you are watching on any channel or platform, please click the thumbs up. The likes really help me. Uh, oh, and please keep the comments coming. So um, I go, I try to go live five times a week. I post five times a week every week. And sometimes I have no clue what to say. So comments give me ideas because, and, and there's no, no bad comments. So, sorry. Hold on one second. 
there's no bad comments. If it, it can be about any topic. It doesn't even have to be about the video you watched. And um, if it's a simple comment, I'll just reply. If it's something I've covered before, I'll send you links to the videos. And if it's something new, I'll do a new video on it. So thank you very, very much for watching.